Let us uh, consider this uh, region here bounded above by a function f that is uh, continuous on the closed interval a, b. So how do we find the volume of the solid generated by this region when we revolve it about the x-axis? So if we're going to revolve this region about the x-axis, we'll get a solid of this form. The first thing that we're going to do here is to approximate the volume of this solid. And how are we going to do that? We're going to use the same strategy as what we did when we derived the formula in finding area of plane regions. So what we're going to do here is to approximate first this region here using n rectangles. So we can do that by dividing this interval here, AB, into n intervals. And let's say that this is the ith rectangle. And the height of this rectangle is determined by x sub i star, which is in this ith interval. And now we're going to revolve this rectangle here about this x-axis and we'll be able to generate a cylinder, a right circular cylinder. And our right circular cylinder will look something like this. Again, we divided this interval AB into n equal subintervals. So the length of each interval is given by delta x, which is equal to b minus a all over n. So that is the width of this ith rectangle. And what is the radius of this uh, cylinder here? The radius is equal to the function value at x sub i star, which is the height of this rectangle. Now, how do we find the volume of a right circular cylinder with height equal to delta x and radius, which is equal to f of x sub i star? From the volume formula for right circular cylinder, which is equal to pi r squared h, we'll get the volume of this ith cylinder as pi. And then this is our radius, quantity squared, and then times the height, which is equal to delta x. Now, because this region here is approximated using n rectangles, so we have to revolve each of those uh, rectangles. And each of these rectangles will generate a right circular cylinder. And because we have n rectangles, then we'll be able to generate n cylinders. So the volume of this solid can be approximated by the sum of the volumes of these n cylinders. And how do we find the exact volume of solid of revolution? So we're going to find the limit of this sum here as n approaches infinity, as the number of rectangles increases without bound. So the volume is equal to the limit of this Riemann sum here as n approaches infinity. And we know from the definition of definite integral that this limit of Riemann sum here can be written as a definite integral, and that is the definite integral from a to b of pi times f of x quantity squared dx. Now, what are two ways to remember this uh, formula? First, in this formula, we could think of this part here as the volume of infinitely thin right circular cylinder that is perpendicular to the x-axis with radius f of x and height which is equal to dx. So the thickness of this infinitely thin right circular cylinder here is equal to dx, which is also illustrated in this figure. Another way to remember this formula is the following. So to find the volume of this solid of revolution here, we're going to slice the solid through x where the cross-section is perpendicular to the x-axis, which is the axis of rotation. And if the area of this uh, cross-section here is equal to a of x, then the volume of the solid of revolution can be written as the integral from a to b of a of x dx. And actually, this formula here can be used also for other solids that are not necessarily solids of revolutions. And this strategy here is called finding volumes by slicing. But because we're just talking about solids of revolutions, then the cross-section is always a circle. Therefore, the cross-sectional area is just equal to pi times the square of the radius. So what is the radius? The radius is just equal to f of x. Therefore, the cross-sectional area is pi times the square of f of x. 
let's now move to our specific problems. First, let us consider the region below the function f of x equals x squared plus 1 over the interval 0 to 2. So let's find the volume of the solid generated when we revolve this region about the x-axis. So we're going to obtain a solid that looks like this. And if we slice this region through x, we'll get the following cross-section here. Again, the cross-section must be perpendicular to the axis of rotation, which is the x-axis. And now what is the cross-sectional area? Because the radius of this cross-section is equal to f of x, which is equal to x squared plus 1, then the cross-sectional area is equal to pi times radius squared, which is equal to pi times the square of x squared plus 1. Therefore, the volume of this solid is equal to integral from 0 to 2, so 0 to 2 is the range of x values here, of the cross-sectional area, which is equal to pi times the square of x squared plus 1, and then dx. And to evaluate this integral, we first expand x squared plus 1 quantity squared. We'll get this expression here. And then applying power rule, we get an antiderivative, which is equal to this expression, evaluated from 0 to 2. So we first plug in 2 for x minus plugging in 0 for x. And this sum here can be written as 96 plus 80 plus 30 all over 15. And we'll get the exact answer, which is 206 pi over 15. And this is approximately equal to 43.15. So this is the volume of this solid of revolution. Let's now move to the second problem. Let us consider this region here that is bounded above by the same function and bounded below by y equals negative 2 over the interval 0 to 2. So what is the volume of the solid of revolution that is generated when this region here is revolved about this line y equals negative 2? So how do we find the volume of this solid of revolution? Similar to the previous problem, think of this one as the cross-section of the solid of revolution. Or you may also think of this one as your infinitely thin disk or infinitely thin cylinder with a thickness equal to dx. So what is the area of this cross-section? Again, it is equal to pi times radius squared, and the radius of this one is equal to the length of this segment here which is equal to the difference of these two y values. That is equal to f of x and then minus negative 2. Therefore, the volume of the solid is equal to integral from 0 to 2. Again, 0 to 2 is the range of your x values here. And then pi times this radius here, which is equal to this y value minus this y value here. So x squared plus 1 minus negative 2. So that is the same thing as plus 2. And we can also find the radius by, for example, this is your f of x. And then this height here is actually 2 units. So the radius of our cross-section is equal to f of x. And then you have here the plus 2. And we can write this integral as uh, integral of this expression here, uh, dx. And then again, expanding this square of x squared plus a 3 we'll get x raised to 4 plus 6x squared plus 9. And then applying power rule, we'll get an antiderivative, which is equal to this expression. And we evaluate this antiderivative first at 2, and then minus the value of this antiderivative at 0. And we can write this expression here as 202 pi over 5, which is approximately equal to 126.92. Let's move to the next problem. Suppose we have this region here that is bounded above by this horizontal line, y equals 8, and bounded below by this same function here, f of x equals x squared plus 1, over the interval 0 to 2. How do we find the volume of the solid generated when this region here is revolved about this horizontal line, y equals 8? So applying the same strategy, then think of this again as our cross-section which is a perpendicular to the axis of rotation, y equals 8. So what is the 
area of this uh, cross section. Again, the radius of this uh, cross section is just equal to the difference of uh, this uh, y values here, which is equal to the upper y value, so that is 8, and then minus the lower y value, which is equal to x squared plus 1. So using our formula, we'll get the answer, which is volume equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of pi times radius quantity squared dx. And I'll just leave it to you to evaluate this integral, and you should be able to get 1006 pi over 15, which is approximately equal to 210.7. Next, let us consider solids of revolution, so where the axis of rotations are vertical lines. So let's say we have this region here that is bounded on the right by y equals x squared and the y axis over the interval. 0 to 2. So how do we find the volume of the solid of revolution generated when this region here is revolved about the y-axis? So actually the only difference here is that the components x and y are interchanged. So now instead of uh, integrating with respect to x, we're going to integrate with respect to y. So if we treat this as our cross-section, so our cross-section now is perpendicular to the y-axis and it crosses the y-axis at y. So what is the area of this uh, cross-section? So what is the radius of this uh, cross-section? The radius of this cross-section is just the x-coordinate of uh, this point. And from our equation y equal to x squared, we know that the x-coordinate of uh, this point will be equal to square root of y. So this right part of our parabola is given by this equation x equal to square root of y. So the radius of this cross-section, which is equal to x, is equal to square root of y. Therefore, the volume of the solid is equal to integral from 0 to 2. So now the limits of integration are the range of your y values. So that is from 0 to 2. And then pi times radius, which is equal to square root of y, quantity squared dy. So this is equal again to pi times the square root of y, quantity squared dy, which is equal to integral from 0 to 2 of pi y dy. And this is equal to pi y squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 2. And when we plug in 2 for y, we'll get 2 pi. And for y equals 0, this is equal to 0. So therefore, the volume is equal to 2 pi, which is approximately equal to 6.28. Now, let us consider this region here that is bounded on the right by this parabola and bounded on the left by this vertical line over the interval 0 to 2. So let's find the volume of the solid of revolution generated when this region is revolved about x equals negative 1. So the cross-section of our solid will look something like this. So the volume of our solid is equal to integral from 0 to 2 pi times radius squared dy, and what is again the radius of this cross-section? It is equal to the x-coordinate of this point here, which is actually equal to square root of y, and then plus this one unit here. So this radius here is actually equal to square root of y plus 1, which is the same thing as the distance between this point here and this point, so you just have to take the difference of x values. So that is square root of y minus negative 1, which is equal to square root of y plus 1. And this integrand here is equal to pi times the quantity square root of y plus 1 squared. And I'll just leave it again as an exercise to show that this is equal to 4 thirds of the quantity 3 plus 2 square root of 2, and then times pi, which is approximately equal to 24.41. Let's now move to our last problem. Let us uh, consider this region here that is uh, bounded on the left by this uh, parabola here and on the right by this vertical line x equals 2 over the interval 0 to 1. So let's uh, find the volume when this region here is revolved about this uh, vertical line x equals 2. So from our formula, 
volume is equal to the integral from zero to one, again, because the axis of rotation is a vertical line, you have to integrate with respect to y. And what are the limits of integration? So the limits will be the boundaries of your interval, so that is zero and one. So what is the radius of the cross section? So the cross section of our solid looks uh, something like this. So the radius is the length of this uh, line segment here, which is again equal to the difference of uh, these uh, two x values here. So the x value on the right is two, and then the x value on the left is square root of y, which is uh, from this equation here. x is equal to square root of y. Therefore, the length of this line segment is equal to 2 minus square root of y. So our integrand is equal to pi times the quantity 2 minus square root of y squared. And we can show that this integral is equal to 11 pi over 6, which is approximately equal to 5.76. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to help me grow this channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.